number three. And the first week was basic training. First day was live as strangers in this place. Last week, week number two, was cost. If you haven't heard these sermons, you can listen to them online. I urge you to get to them and be able to listen because it kind of builds from one week to another. Today, if you haven't figured out what today is, basic training number three, day three is, today's sermon is redeemed, redemption. I'm thankful for Caitlin and uh, the entire band because uh, at times, not often, but at times they have to deal with me. And in meaning that, um, you know, when, when I start putting things together, I'm not, I try to do things way ahead of time. It just never happens that way. You, you guys have heard me tell you, I did get this message ahead of time, but so far <laughs> it hasn't worked out the way I thought. So uh, I think it was Wednesday, maybe I sent Caitlin a text and said, I, I want, I, I would like, I, I think I said I would like the song Redeemed. I know Dave has to lead it, and I said, could you... Uh, let me know, and as soon as she had a break from teaching, I get a text, and she said, for sure, so thank you, because that song uh, is powerful, just because of what it means, and that's what we're going to look at today, and I'm going to really try to get through, because what I'm trying to do every week is I'm trying to get through the one per week. That's what I'm trying. So this week I'm going to try. We got communion. Don't let me forget that, but we have communion, so uh, I may be talking fast at times, so you're going to have to listen fast. Capiche? All right, so we'll start now. Redeemed or redemption. First thing I wanted to do, as I usually do, is we need to look at some definitions, and here in this one particularly, I want to look at what's called an origin of the word and what that word redeemed means. Actually, from where, what I found out, and I knew this a long time ago, but things don't always stick, but the word redeemed, its origin comes from the slave trade. Back in biblical times, it comes from the slave trade, basically what it means to obtain release by payment of a ransom. So when we hear this song or we hear these words redeemed, it's based out of the slave trade. It's very important that you lock that in your head throughout this message as I talk about this thing called being redeemed or redemption. Some other definitions are, and this is from Little Webster, to buy or to pay off, to clear by payment, to buy back. And finally, the last one is to recover. That is what redemption is. That's what redeemed is. The first scripture I want you to turn to, and I actually going to have them just put the scripture verse up there, is Romans chapter 6, verse number 20. What do you think? People said I couldn't get high tech. Woo -woo. Raise the roof, baby. Woo -woo. Okay. So anyway, but you know what? They said, do you want me, Dad, do you want me to put the whole scripture? No. I'm just putting them up there so you can write them down. Look them up on your own. Okay? First scripture is this. Romans 6.20 reads as this. When you were slaves. Oh, there's that word. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. The very first thing that we have to realize is this shows us the conditions of our souls before we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. We are slaves to sin. Therefore, it says you were free from the control of righteousness. In other words, righteousness had no control over your life whatsoever because you were birthed into sin. We were sold as slaves into sin. When Adam and Eve failed in the garden, they sold humanity into sin, into slavery. It's important that we really understand that because what we became slaves to, we became slaves to sin and everything that goes along with it. For example, the guilt and the shame. We became an object of wrath because God could not look upon sin. And man, the separation came between God and man that God had never wanted to see happen. But because of man's free choice, we became, we sold ourselves, get this, we sold ourselves into sin. We became slaves to sin. Therefore, we were free from the control of righteousness. Righteousness had no control over our lives. Now get this. Uh, you, you guys know my background and stuff, and for the most part, and, 
you know, I, I do get shocked by what the world does. I, I do get shocked by some of the things. It's just, but then again, I always take a step back. And, I, and Chira, I think, gets more shocked than I do. But I always say to her, honey, remember something. They don't know Christ. They don't know Christ. So the world is going to go the way of the world. But what blows my mind is when we do not, as Christians, the people who have accepted Jesus Christ in their life, do not allow God to become the righteousness of their life, therefore controlling their life with his righteousness. That's what it means right there. We were sold as slaves into sin. Therefore, righteousness had no control over our lives. All right, now what I'm going to do is I, I uh, printed out my scriptures, and I'm going to read them out, and Allie... The next one is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. So you all are going to have to listen again. They're just up there for you to look up, and then you can uh, go look them up now or look them up later. But I want to read these to you. I don't normally preach like this. Normally, you know, I kind of hang in the Scripture for a while. I'm going to give you all the Scriptures first, then I'm going to explain it to you, uh, you know, and, and, and okay. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says this. In him we have redemption. Stop right there. All right. In him we have redemption. Because there's a couple other scriptures I'm going to be reading that has the same word in there, redeemed or redemption. But, get this, they have a little bit different meanings. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to try to impress you with trying to say the Greek word. Or maybe I will if I want to. But uh, anyway, but yeah, I'm going to give you the definition of what this means right here in this passage because it's important that you hear it. Okay? All right. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says, In, in him we have redemption. The Greek word there means to procure by the payment of a ransom. In other words, to pay ransom. So let's read it as that. In him we have been paid for with a ransom through his blood, where we find the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Next one, Galatians chapter 3, verse number 13. Yep, I'm going to be flying. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 13 reads as this. Christ redeemed. Okay, stop right there because it's a different Greek word right there. So the Greek word here means to buy out of the hands of a person. Now listen, let's read it like that. Christ bought us out of the hands of a person. Us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is anyone who is hung on a pole. Jesus Christ bought us out of the hands of a person. What's the person? Sin. Next one. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4 through 5. Galatians 4, 4 through 5 reads as this. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, verse number five, to redeem. Okay, now stop right there. Which Greek word is it? Redeem, this one, is to buy out of the hands of a person. So here, to buy out of the hands of a person, those under the law, that they might receive what? Adoption to sonship. I was part of an adoption one time. I, a, a girl that uh, had been in our youth group, as young, 15 or 16, I don't remember, but she, she, she had a baby out of wedlock, and she wanted uh, to give the baby up for adoption. So I became part of the uh, process, which was amazing. And I remember standing in that hospital. I don't know if you, you, you were with me, right? We were standing in that hospital after she gave birth to this little, the little girl. And, uh, yeah, it was, because then a the little girl, and... Uh, I remember I, I took that little baby, and, you know, I'm not real good with that stuff. You know, it's, they're so little and slimy. And, uh, but I, I took that little baby, and I remember I, they, after they wrapped her up, I, I, I took her and handed her to the adoptive parents. And I tell you what, those adoptive parents looked at that kid. They didn't care whose shoot it came out of. It didn't matter. What mattered? That was their little girl. And that's what's amazing about it. So here in this scripture it says, He redeemed us. He bought us from the hands of a person under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Keep that in mind. Next scripture, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 14. 
Got to be rolling, so listen fast. In him we have redemption. Stop right there. Which redemption is it? It's the one that says we are bought and paid for by a ransom. So in him we have been bought and paid for with a ransom, therefore for the forgiveness of sins. There is only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. There is only one way to find forgiveness of sins, through the blood of Jesus Christ. No other way. You can say 150 Our Fathers, Hail Marys, Novenas, or whatever else we may say in other denominations or whatever. You could do a whole bunch of works. You could think you're good enough. You could bring the biggest Bible to church. All of that is Greek word, hooey. There is only one way and one way only, and that is through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. For all have sinned. And I'll just stop there, and you're like, well, it didn't say redeemed. I know, I just want that little point to sink in. Because some people actually don't think they fall into that category. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption, through the paying of a ransom that came by Christ Jesus. You want to know what the payment for your life was? It was the Son of God. It was Christ Jesus. He was the payment for your sin. He was the payment for your shame. He was the payment for your guilt. He was the payment for it. His blood was the payment for all. The world cheats. The world lies. God will never. And he, when he pays it, he takes you in. He adopts you as sonship. He calls you his own. There have been kids in our lives over the 30-some years and all the years we are youth ministry. And some of you are sitting here today. And some I still have phone numbers for. And I send texts to them in the morning when I'm praying. I can look at every one of you. And you're not blood to us. But we know. I told her all the time. She looks really good for having 900 children. <laughs> you're adopted by us. We love you. We fight for you. We will stand in the gap for you. You're part of us. We are part of you, whether you like it or not. You're, this body, guess what? We've adopted you. You've adopted us. But most importantly, Christ has adopted us all. And it's important that we get that. Now, let me read stuff. Here's something interesting about a ransom. You would never, at least in my thinking, you would never buy back something or pay a ransom for something unless... You saw great value in it. Why would you, I, I mean, think about it. If something wasn't a value for it to you, why would you pay a ransom for it? You just tell the people who took it, keep it. Keep it. You can have it. It's fine. I've never, well, I've, I knew kids in college that would drive through neighborhoods and pick up furniture that people would set out for the garbage. You, you know, that's disgusting. If you did that, you're disgusting. I mean, I do a lot of disgusting things. That's disgusting. But this one family, I want to say it was in Florida. I just saw it last week. They picked up a couch. Anybody see this? They picked up a couch that was thrown out. And they brought it home, put it in their house. They said it had a little funny smell to it. And then this snake comes crawling out of one of the cushions. Now, you know what? I said to myself, good for you, dim, dipstick, you dimwit. They put it out for the garbage for a reason. They're throwing it away. It's not worth anything. Understand something. A ransom would never be paid unless whoever was paying the ransom saw the value, hear me, saw the value, knew the value of what that thing was that they were buying back. Now, God saw the value of man even though he had to look through the fact that we, first of all, we lived as enemies of the cross. You don't have to turn to this, but Philippians chapter 3 verse number 18 says, for many live as enemies of the cross. So yet, even though we lived against God, 
He still saw the value in us. Important for you to understand that because a lot of people, when they come to Christ, they carry in all this big truckload of guilt. And along with that guilt is all the reasons why they can never think that God could ever love them enough to care that much for them. And that is, again, from the pit of hell. He saw the value through the fact that we lived as enemies against him. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't tell you this because it may be actually somebody you're sitting next to. Uh, think of the person you hate the most in life. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, just think. If they were taken, and they hate you, and if they were taken for ransom, and you were the only one that had payment for it, <laughs> would you pay it? <laughs> no, I'm just being honest, and you can all repent because after I'm done. But, you know, in fact, probably one of the end prayers will be a repair prayer of repentance, uh, but would you pay it if they hated you? <laughs> Jeannie says, can, they, can we use their money? Think of this. We hated God. We were enemies of the cross. Second thing we were, children of darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, we were once children of darkness. And he wants us to do what? Become children of light. So we are enemies and we hid in the darkness. Third thing, we lived according to the flesh, and our minds are set on what the flesh desires. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. Our minds aren't naturally geared towards heaven. Our minds aren't naturally geared towards the spirit. Our minds are geared towards the flesh and the earth and the world and the stuff and the things here. And yet, in all of this, and these are just three that I put down. I'm sure I could have put down a whole load of them. But even in the midst of all of this, yet God still says, you know what? There's value. Bottom line is this. We are still and always will be a creation of God. You're just not here because your parents had sex. Okay? Little sperm, hit little egg, there you were. <laughs> That's not why you're here. That's not why you're here. See, if you start to think that's the only reason you're here, you will stay stuck in your life. When you start to think and believe that you are created for something special and that God sees the, the unbelievable value in your life, then you'll get beyond it. The main purpose of our lives, get this, is to know him more. To know him more. That's our main purpose of our life. It's not to make a bunch of money, but thank God we do, so we can give it away. It's not about the stuff that we have. It's not about who we know. Some people say, you know, I, I wish I knew so-and-so. Why? Why? They're the same as you. Maybe... Maybe they should think, hey, I should know you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Redemption is provided by mercy and grace. Get that? Redemption is provided by mercy and grace and is paid for through the blood ransom of Jesus Christ. It's provided through grace and mercy because God is a graceful and merciful God because if that wasn't the case, none of us would be here. As soon as we are born, he'd, he'd off us. But yet, because of grace and mercy, we're still here. And the only reason we are is because the ransom has been paid with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, get this. And I wrote part of this on Facebook the other day and posted it. It was a cliffhanger. I think Lou wrote back to me and, or Danielle or somebody wrote, it's a cliffhanger. I want you to hear this statement. And I, I worked on it a couple ways, so this is the best way I can word it. When the world says this to you, look at you. You're nothing. You're just taking up space. You can reply simply this way. Yep. You are 100% right. I am nothing to this world. But I am something to the creator of this world. So much so that he ransomed me. He paid for my forgiveness it was all done because he sees the value of my 
life. Do you hear that? I'm going to read it to you again. When the world looks at you and says that you are nothing and all you're doing is taking up space, you look at that world right in the face and say, you are 100% correct. I am that according to this world. But I am something to the creator of this world. The one who molded and shaped and put it all together. I am of value to him. For he saw through all my darkness, he saw, saw through all my sin, he saw through all the garbage of my life, and he saw value of who I was, and he says, I will pay with the ransom of my son because I am of value to him. I've been back in schools. Maybe that spurs me on a little bit more. When I see young people, that are just devastated by the world. Girls that have to pretend and act a certain way to be accepted. Boys that also have to pretend and act a certain way to be what the world says is a man. Next in two weeks, the week from tomorrow, Chira and I, I volunteered her. We're, we're speaking at, a, 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 at an all-girls high school. <laughs> She's got to teach on etiquette. Which is just, she taught me. I mean, I am who I am because of her. So, no, it's right there. It's around. I'm going to teach 200 girls about what it means to be a lady from a guy's point of view. I don't know if these girls are going to be ready what I have to say. <laughs> but you know what's heartbreaking? Is people change who they are, and they allow the world to mold in and shape them because they don't believe that they have any more value of just now. And God's value is so much more purposeful than what you could ever imagine. So when the world throws that in your face, agree with them. Sure. But then you stand and you know inside of your heart that you are so much more valued than what that world has to say. The value of the world will never measure up to the value that God sees. No one, nothing in this world will ever ransom your life. In fact, God is the one that ransoms you from this life. Redemption provides us with new life. New life. One of the lines in that song that I love is the fact when he says, I'm not the old man that I used to be. I am redeemed. You know what we have in here? We have a bunch of old lives that have been redeemed. We have a lot of old people in here in sin that are redeemed. We're not the old man that we used to be. Because we have been adopted into sonship. Our name changed. That little girl was born of this woman with a certain last name. When I handed that little girl and kissed that little critter on the head and handed it to that mom, that little girl's name became that family. And to this day, and she's got to be tw 20s, early, tw 26. Now, she might be married by now. I heard from them for about the first five years. They adopted a second child, a boy, named it Stephen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Both of those little kids have their last name. Whose last name do you have? Side note, you ever read their obituaries? It just came to me. You know how people, you ever notice people die in alphabetical order? L look it up. Don't sit there. Oh, tr it's the truth. Okay. Thank God I'm a T. Well, I'm at the bottom. <laughs> UAs. <laughs> Whose last name do you have? 
you still bound by this world? Redemption is there. No matter what, get this, no matter what cost sin demands payment for, Jesus Christ is still more than that. Get that in your head, but most importantly, get that in your heart. No matter what the cost is of the sin in our lives, Jesus Christ and his blood is more than enough to pay that ransom for each and every life because it says that in his word. Folks, stop listening to the voices of this world. Stop listening to the lies of this world. Start believing and trusting and knowing that you, that I, have been redeemed. And that's the basics that you need to get in your life and you need to hang on to throughout your walk in this earth, in your Christianity, until the day you are called up yonder. That's what it means. You're redeemed. Father, you set us free. You redeemed us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so much for paying that ransom, making that payment in our life for all of mankind. 